Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to talk about a way of classifying antibiotics. This is broad spectrum versus narrow spectrum antibiotics. So first we'll talk about the broad spectrum grouping and the and, and antibiotics are classified as a broad spectrum antibiotic if they are generally effective against a really wide range of bacteria particularly gram positive and gram negative bacteria. Sometimes this term broad spectrum antibiotics is used more subjectively, meaning um, to refer to an antibiotic that is um, broadly applicable against a wide variety of pathogens that cause disease. Um, but that's a fairly subjective um, sort of characterization. And so more often we see gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. It has to be effective against members of both of these classifications in order to be considered broad spectrum. Now gram-positive and gram-negative, we're not gonna go into really what that means, although I do have another video on that topic if you're interested, um, but that's different ways of characterizing bacteria based on the type of cell wall that they have. Now, when are broad spectrum antibiotics used? Well, they're used when it's been determined that a patient has a bacterial infection, but the causative agent has not been specifically identified. This is what we call empiric therapy. So a doctor has said, hey, this person has, uh, has a bacterial infection. I don't quite know what kind of bacteria is causing it and their symptoms are severe enough that we need to be treating them immediately. We don't have time to figure out exactly what the infection is being caused by. We've got to treat it now. So I'm going to use a broad spectrum antibiotic for this. Some examples include ampicillin, tetracycline, ciprofloxacin, Sometimes this is just called Cipro. These are ones that you might have heard of elsewhere, but broad spectrum antibiotics are not without risks. The two main risks, we'll talk about them. Uh, the first one is the development of antibiotic resistance. This is something that you may have seen on the news. It's a growing problem in our healthcare system. And this is when bacteria are developing resistance to our antibiotics. And so our antibiotics no longer work to fight infections caused by those specific strains or species that are resistant to that antibiotic. And it's definitely a growing problem. We have bacteria that are becoming more and more resistant, um, even examples of pan-resistant bacteria. That's bacteria that are resistant to all known antibiotics. And we as a community really need to get some new antibiotics developed if we want to be able to continue fighting these infections. Another big risk to the use of these broad spectrum antibiotics is that they may disrupt the microbiome. Remember that we as individuals have lots and lots of good beneficial symbiotic bacteria living within us. Whether it is on our skin, in our gut, um, in our reproductive tracts, we have lots and lots of bacteria and this is called our microbiome. They do many things for us. They help to keep our immune system primed. There's bacteria in our gut that make vitamin K for us, um, bacteria in our gut that help us to break down our food so that we can get nutrients from our food more effectively. Um, they do lots and lots of good things for us. Unfortunately, if you take a broad spectrum antibiotic that's effective against a wide range of bacteria, it can kill off your good symbiotic bacteria at the same time that it's killing off the pathogen. And so that's a, a, a big issue with broad spectrum antibiotics. And the reason that you don't want to use them if you can use a narrow spectrum antibiotic instead. So now let's switch our focus to talking about the narrow spectrum antibiotics. These are ones that are effective against only a specific group of bacteria. 
So this is when a doctor is able to say, hey, you have a bacterial infection. Based on your symptoms or lab tests, we can be certain that it is caused by this particular kind of bacterium. And so narrow spectrum antibiotics can be prescribed when the causative agent, when the bacterium, the type of bacterium that is causing the disease has actually been identified. So perhaps a sample taken by the doctor has shown that it is definitely um, some kind of gram positive bacterium or based on symptoms and um, tests in, in a hospital. The doctor knows that you're infected with some kind of mycobacterium, for example, maybe mycobacterium tuberculosis or something like that. And so it's been identified and the doctor can prescribe a narrow spectrum antibiotic, one that is specifically effective against just that group of bacteria that a person is infected with. Some examples of this include penicillin, basitracin, polymyxin antibiotics. And in general, um, this narrow spectrum antibiotics, because the causative agent has been identified, instead of being called an empiric therapy, this is referred to as a definitive therapy. And importantly, it has fewer risks compared to using these broad spectrum antibiotics. It's not going to disrupt the microbiome, um, at least not nearly as severely. And antibiotic resistance is only going to be a concern within this, this specific range of bacteria rather than a very broad range of bacteria. So fewer risks. And so this is the preferred type of therapy to prescribe a narrow spectrum antibiotic rather than a broad spectrum antibi antibiotic. And that's just whenever it's possible. There are times when a doctor is going to be forced to prescribe a broad spectrum antibiotic, generally because they don't know exactly what's causing the disease, but the patient's symptoms are severe enough that something has to be done immediately. Um, if you are interested in learning more about gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, check out my video on that topic. If you're interested in another way to classify bacteria that's based, or excuse me, um, to classify antibiotics that's based on their mechanism of action against bacteria, you can check out my video on bacteriostatic versus bactericidal drugs. That's it for today. Thanks for watching Biology Professor.